Okay, so we're back at con to controlling uh, uh, Dr. Styles, David. Yes, let's look around them. That bed has been in this house for centuries. Family law has it that King Henry VIII slept in it. And again, my ancestors were notorious liars. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's a little boring controlling uh, Dr. Styles because we can't go anywhere. He doesn't like leaving the house and stuff. Oh, shit, that scared me. I saw the mirror image. So, what was he... Did I don't know, get what he was so... Uh, scared about when looking in the mirror. I didn't get that part. There's nothing in there now. Was Laura really here this morning? That's a good question. Do we have anything in our inventory? Private lab key, wallet and David's diary. So are we going to do... Uh, I'm, I'm guessing we need to prepare the next experiment or something like that. Let's uh, head down and talk to Mrs. Dalton. This last video probably won't be as long as the previous one. That's an owl. And a woman. A woman and an owl. Is that an owl? I think that... Maybe that's not an owl. Looks like an owl. Is that an owl? I don't know. You can toggle the subtitles on and off in the graphics options. Like s any other game. Well, modern games, that is. Most modern games. I think, yeah, I think most, the majority of modern games has subtitles, if there's dialogue in it. Good morning. How was your breakfast? Fine. Is Samantha in? She's at university. Would you like me to call her? Actually, I prefer not to be disturbed. If she comes in, tell her that, will you? Of course. <laughs> Was that it? Can we not... Hmm. I guess we need to go down to the lab. That's the only thing I can think of. Yeah, we don't get as many clues as to what to do when we play as Dr. Styles as, as we do when we're playing as Samantha. So let's head into the private lab. Maybe we're supposed to do... Maybe we're supposed to do, like, another dream session. That might be it. That was the what we did last time we played as, uh, as David. Why not go a little closer to the door instead of leaning so much forward? Let's see. I can't go in there now. Why not? Do we have a... Uh, no. Actually, I never... Yeah. You can... I guess you can look at this and tell what to do. A day in the rowboat. What? Sigh in the mind what happened the day before the experiment. A day in a... in the rowboat? Are we actually leaving the house? Probably not. But I'm guessing that is a dream session, then. My files. Oh! Oh, we made a report, I guess. Oh, that's pretty cool. We get Sam's report here. Okay, let's read it. Um, report on incidents at Oxford. Prepared by Sam Everett. Incident 1. Horsepath Track. Eyewitness Eddie Stern was painting white lines on the track with a roller at the time of the incident. He was overcome by a cloud of dust and debris. O unable to see or breathe, he escaped the dust by running into the track's center lawn. He claims that a funnel he saw on the track turned corners to follow... Th he, he claims that a funnel he saw on the track... Wouldn't that be the funnel? No, oh, wait, 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 I don't know. On the track, turn corners to follow the track's curves, and that the elaborate pattern of lines was was laying within five to ten minutes of his first encounter with the cloud of dust. However, he admits that it is possible he could have passed out and been unaware of the actual length of 
incident. Of the incident, he was wearing headphones and could not describe any associated sounds. Time eyewitness estimates it was 11:30. Incident two, St. Edmund's Hall pool. Eyewitness Jeannie Smith was about to enter the pool when she felt a stat. Oh wait, Jeannie Smith. Oh, I I I kept thinking that Jeannie was the name of the Irish girl. But Jeannie was actually the swimmer. Oh, I'm, not, I'm an idiot. What is the name of the... I don't know. Jeannie Smith was about to enter the pool when she felt a static charge in the air. She looked into the pool and saw a big wave or displacement of water under the surface. The size and shape was similar to a large human or missile shape. Shortly after, she saw that the water had turned dark purple. No dye was found in the water filter or pool next morning. The maintenance man was clueless as to any possible mechanical cause for the incident. The witness was traumatized and regards it as an evil or frightening apparition. Time, eyewitness estimates it was between 11.40 and 11.45. Interesting. Uh... Any new video logs? Doesn't look like it. Laura's presence in the house has continued. I've decided to begin a new experiment to study the effects of imagination. I'll use students as subjects and my fMRI. My hope is... Okay, we already see that. I think the, the, the sound levels are completely off when we watch that. It's really annoying. Okay. So, can we do something with this? Oh, maybe there's new letters. No? Wait, y wait yes there is. Impo. I'm pooping. That's what the ghost is trying to say. What is it, Laura? Keep going, darling. Give me a few more letters. So we get more letters. Im important. Important. Northrod PC. Makes sense. What do we have here? Dr. Styles, you sounded anxious for this, so I had it carried. Oh. I have everything set. We already have this one. Okay, go away. The dialogue generator is set correct. Yeah, okay. So there's nothing more to do here. Wait, I want to go in this. I can't go in that. Why not? Uh, anything new here? Uh. So, is there a way for me to actually see what date it is to do for today? Apt appointment with Dr. R Rumstein. That's not what it says. Check RNG device. Repeat memory exercise for new session with Laura. Use one of Laura's favorite places for inspiration. Okay, so... 10 a.m. Samantha saw Laurie at the top of the stairs. She was wearing a white dress. Yeah, we already... Uh, moo... Moo... Laura physically touched me this morning while showered. When did I write that? When did I write that? I just came down here. Um, that's... Okay, so wait. What are we... We have an appointment with Dr. R Remstein, or Remskin. So, repeat memory exercise. Use one of Laura's favorite places for inspiration. So I'm guessing... Something with a rowboat, since there was a chapter called that. Let's... But how do we go see... Am I actually leaving the house? Oh, that would be exciting. Let's take a look at the map. See if we actually are leaving the house. <gasps> We're leaving the house. But I think we'll do that next time. Let's just quickly explore a little more because I have to stop. I, mean, I, did, I think the <laughs> previous video was a came a little longer than expected. Let's look at through some of the uh, photos and see if we can find a picture that uh there are sufficient funds in there at the moment oh that wasn't the photos these are the photos ooh still love that picture laura and me 
We need something with a lake, I believe. Lauren. That's the jeet. That's the jeet. That was taken on our. Laura and me. She hated me for taking this one. I love you for taking that one. <laughs> so we need to find something that would. Some sensory items for this ex the next experiment. Maybe let's go into the closet, see if we can find can I not I wanna go in here. Spare, Spare room. rooms. I keep them locked. I mean Snoop in Sam's room? Sam's room. She's probably not here as usual. He's a very complaining man. It sounds like he was complaining about her not being here, but he actually said that he was earlier that he was glad she was not there. But he's just a very negative dude. We need some sensory. Let's go find the address. This dress. Laura's dress. Ah. Could Laura herself have taken it? Now I really am going mad. Wait, is it gone? Can we? No, we can't. Uh, wow, there's nothing in here. I do believe that we... Maybe the only thing we can do is actually go to see that dude. I read the driest science books I can find, but not even that can put me to sleep at night. Okay. David's bathroom. Nah. You know what? Screw it. We're going here. We're leaving the house. So he does leave, I guess. Oh, hi. Dr. Styles. it's very good to meet you. Sorry to disturb you. It's an honor. I remember when your Scientific American article came out. My colleagues and I were thrilled to see such open-mindedness in a leading neurobiologist. As you can see, things have deteriorated since then. Uh, please, come inside. I am inside. On the phone, it sounded important. Huh, interesting house. I guess he's Indian. One thing you learn as a neurobiologist is that reality is subjective, like the story of the blind man and the elephant. One of my patients had a what? brain tumor and became convinced his wife was an alien in disguise. Everyone else saw an everyday housewife. He saw something horrible. What clues do we pick up from our environment every day that tell us how to perceive the world? One man sees a pile of logs, another a sleeping giant. Perception is a slippery thing. My wife, Laura, died in 2002, but the reality I chose was to keep her alive. In my mind and in my heart. I started experiments in an isolation tank to bring back as many memories of her as possible, even the small and subtle ones. And I didn't give a toss what anyone thought. And now? The thing I didn't foresee was that Laura might actually come back. I've suddenly got uh, quite a chill. Perhaps you'll start from the beginning while I light the fire. No fire, please. Oh, fire uh, please forgive me. I'll call for some tea. I'm quite anxious to hear what you have to say, Dr. Stiles. If you'd start at the beginning, please. It sounds fascinating. I've never performed any experiments with an isolation tank myself but they may well concentrate certain energies. I'd be happy to help in any way I can. And I'd be very interested in your theories on the phenomenon as a neurobiologist, if you'd be so kind. Ah, interesting. Zai and, Zai and trauma, Zai and neurobiology, similar haunting, Zai and fire. Let's do that one. In cases that you're familiar with of hauntings, is it typical for the deceased to obsess over their deaths? I'd say so. 
particularly if it was violent. Laura keeps communicating about the accident, but I'm not sure if there's really something there or if she's just fixated on that moment out of shock. I know you'll leave no stone unturned finding out. If there's nothing to it, it will be clear soon enough. Yes, of course. Oh, so this guy is some kind of pseudo scientist kind of thing, spiritual dude. Otherwise, I mean, that must be the thing. Otherwise, we wouldn't be asking him about stuff like that. Uh, similar hauntings. Have you heard of any similar hauntings, for lack of a better word? Uh, some of the elements. Such as the way Laura communicated with you in the tank and the RNG message. These sound like classic communiques from the spirit world. But other things you've described, the moved nightgown, the form under the sheets, and most particularly the events at the university, those sound like PK activity, telekinesis, objects being moved with the power of the mind. Are you positive all these manifestations are Laura? Of course. One paranormal source is remarkable enough, much less two different ones. Don't you agree? You have a point. Hmm. Psi and neurobiology. Studies done with dying and comatose patients have provided some interesting clues about consciousness. There are authenticated cases of the mind projecting itself from the body, witnessing things that occurred far away. If the mind can project itself from the body, then it's possible for consciousness to survive physical death. Do you have a scientific explanation for how that might work? Quantum theory suggests that three-dimensional space and time are essentially created by the brain in order to organize the masses of data that make up reality. The brain operates like a translation device in the same way that a television set organizes bits of electronic data into an image. If the human brain creates space and time, then theoretically the brain could project the mind into the past or future, making itself essentially immortal. That's astonishing. I hope you intend to publish on this theory. I'm still conducting my research. Well, that was actually interesting. I'm not sure I believe in it. But I like the thing that he said about... Um, that our brain is 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 picking up what we see and that is true i mean all the colors the shapes i mean the shapes i guess we can feel as well but the without our imagine if you a, a video game for that, for instance without any textures maybe that's what uh, a lot of it looks like but then our brain kind of paints it all through some kind of programming it knows what color things should be huh I don't know if that makes sense but it kind of got me kind of anyway moving on Psy and fire is there any connection between Psy activity and heat or fire yes uh, telekinesis in particular is very elemental there's a classic poltergeist case that involved a young girl in the American heartland. The manifestations in her household all revolved around water. Water running down the walls of the house, seeping out of the wallpaper and welling up from the floors. Another classic telekinesis phenomenon is raining stones. And I recall reading about a shaman in East Africa who could make his victims burst into flames. It would all suggest that telekinetic powers are drawn from the earth but I'm not aware of any studies done on the subject. Uh, well, he just mentioned this, so let's talk asking about it. Can you tell me more about the East African shaman? I'll tell you what I remember. It's a well-documented case from the early 1900s, researched by a member of the Society for Psychical Research. He was traveling in Africa when he ran across this shaman. He put the man through a variety of tests and reached the conclusion that the shaman was projecting electricity at strong enough levels to literally start fires, predictably and reliably. This notion seemed confirmed by the odd fact that when the shaman was wet, his fire-starting ability didn't work. Of course, in those days, experiments in electricity were all the rage, so you have to take that into consideration. Still, he made a compelling case. Huh. Okay. Okay. Incidents on campus. I'm wondering if the events on campus aren't some kind of psychic residue from Laura's attempts to come through. 
If she's generating energy, it might get channeled in unpredictable ways. I can't say, of course. But the energy involved in the campus events is so unusually powerful. It's unlike any spiritual communication I've ever heard of. But you said yourself you've never dealt with a case that involved an isolation tank. Uh, true. True. I'm quite curious to see where this is all heading, Dr. Stiles. Me too. Oh, are we leaving? Okay. Thank you for your expertise, Doctor. There's one more thing. I was hoping you could give me some advice on how I might help Laura. Help her come through. Uh, Dr. Stiles, I'm not sure what you mean by coming through. Earthbound spirits are trapped here because of some unresolved trauma or an inability to accept their own deaths. The goal in such a scenario is to free the spirit so that he or she can move on. Move on? To what? Oblivion? I mean, what if Laura could be brought back? But what body would she inhabit? Oh, How could she interact shit. with our world? All religions believe that there is some kind of afterlife and... Yes, thank you, Doctor. I'm afraid it's getting quite late. I must go. I do hope you'll keep in touch. I'd like to know how this develops. Of course. Good day. Goodbye. Goodbye. Is she gonna use our body? As in Samantha's body to bring back his dead wife? That would be a little freaky. And we're back. And with this, I think we are actually going to end this session. Because I do believe that this has been a... Rather long session, longer than most at least, but uh, we got a lot of stuff done. So yeah, I will uh, see you next time for more Grey Matter. Bye-bye.